everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. Made it through another week. Uh, I got a bunch of things to do today, so it might be a short video. But um, I had to go up to my sister's house uh, yesterday, do some work up there, and uh, pick up a couple jobs. But um, one thing that uh, I wanted to talk about when I was looking through some, she has some beautiful artwork around her house. And I've always been a fan, as you know, some of you followers of the channel know, I'm, I've always been a fan of, of, of an artist, of the skills of an artist. And that, if I could have one skill, I wish I had that skill of an artist, you know, that especially somebody that could sit down and sketch somebody out and draw something like beautifully like that in, in minutes, that is a true skill. And um, one of the beauties of living in this era the time that is that we're living in I know it seems like kind of a not the best time to be, <laughs> to be around be, compared to some of the past times I always but that's the beauty of it is that we can always revert and surround ourselves with things from years ago like I do with watching old programs television programs it's like I'm transported I, I my whole life is is 30 40 50 years ago uh, <clears throat> everything around my house everything I you know I'm an older soul trapped in this generation however uh the artwork every once in a while something comes up that just drives me nuts and you know what drives me nuts you would think that with all our past accomplishments that we've achieved as a race of people that we would just keep getting better and better you know i mean if michelangelo could carve out from marble uh, some of these beautiful statues you would and that was hundreds of years ago you would think by now that we should be you know doing some fantastic work especially with all the equipment and manufacturing and uh, everything that we have at our fingertips he had a chisel and a hammer now this brings me to, to what I'm talking about like this there's a um, Google Fi You've seen the advertisements, they've been shoved down our throat on every channel. Google Fi, it's a, I, I think it's a foam plan for people that are easily compromised and lazy spirits because they have the artwork of this commercial is probably some of the most grotesque artwork I've ever seen in my life. And I don't know if they're doing that on purpose. Uh, they're just, the images are disturbing. Uh, you know, misshapen people and the colors are all uh, wrong. Everything about this is wrong. And, you know, I know there are some people out there who say, well, it's impressionistic. It's not. I know impressionistic artwork and there are some beautiful, I can even get on board with uh, Jackson Pollock and, and uh, you know, there are some beautiful, I love some impressionistic art, but this is just... I, I think people got together and just said, yeah, just put anything together, you know, we'll just throw it out there. It doesn't matter. And that's what drives me nuts. And uh, so I was at, and the reason I'm bringing this up, I was at my sister's house and and uh, she has like beautiful paintings around the house. And one of these paintings was uh, of George Washington. And the title of the painting is A Prayer at Valley Forge. And it was uh, painted by Arnold Freiberg. And it is just a absolute beautiful painting and if you just take a look at this for a moment just can you appreciate the talent and artwork that went into this painting uh, and not just the subject matter but how he captured the whole moment the breath of the horse showing how cold it is and if you've ever been in a cold environment you could this is spot on the sunlight piercing through the trees creating you know little shadows and and the bark of the tree and each one of those have to be shouted just beautiful work now that is when you look at that it's it's emotional it's emotional you look you say what a beautiful piece of artwork and then you look at a, a piece of crap <laughs> pardon my expression like like what they're trying to shove down our throat uh, on this Google Fi commercial and if they think that advertising helps if they think it works it might work on some people, like I said, people that are easily compromised and, but not me. That I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy that plan if it was the last plan on earth, just because of that. If you want to be that lazy, <laughs> anyways, it's kind of a little bit of a vent, right? Anyway, let's see what we got to get to today. Sorry about that long-winded vent, but uh, I hope we're not, that's not a trend. 
I hope we, we're getting better instead of getting worse. Let's see what we got today. Now, the reason I went up to my sister, she needed some work on the flagpole and I never saw this design and it's an old time design and I wish I would have known about it before I put my flagpole in. And a lot of you have uh, expressed interest in putting your own flagpole in. And basically this is the way most of us do it is uh, you put a sleeve into the ground. And the reason you do that is because you always want to have access and to be able to take the pole down in case you have a pulley problem, in case you have to paint the flagpole. You never just want to cement the pole in the ground because then, you know, there's no, unless you have a ladder that can reach up or a cherry picker, it's very difficult to do any maintenance on the pole. And eventually you will have to take your pole down for one reason or another. Even if the line snaps, how are you going to get a new line up there? You have to get to access to the top. So we bury a sleeve in the ground and then you put the pole inside of a sleeve. But the problem you have is, first of all, to get a sleeve that's so tight that it stops any wobbling because any bit of uh, play is going to give you a wobble and uh, then trying to, you know, secure that area. It's, it's kind of a pain. Let me show you the ingenious way that my sister's flagpole has now my sister's in. flagpole design an old time design which i did not know about uh incorporates three poles these two outer poles are buried into the ground you see this one here and this one here they go into the ground maybe four feet or whatever and they stand above the ground maybe four feet so these are two solid poles this in the middle is the flagpole and there is a bolt across the top and a bolt across the bottom. Basically, it looks like this, okay? So here's your outer pole on both sides. Your inner flag pole that goes up. Ours is like 60 feet tall, it's huge. Now there are two uh, threaded rods that go through uh, both the flag pole and the two outer poles on the top and bottom with uh, nuts and washers. And now the beauty of this system is, first of all, it's solid. It's like having a, a pole that's cemented into the ground. Secondly, when you have to do maintenance, all you do is you remove this threaded rod portion here. This pulls out. You loosen up the bottom one, and the whole pole will, fall, you know, you can re lower the pole down to a horizontal level like this. You know, remember, it's still attached at the bottom. So you just get a rope, and you can lower it down, and then you could do any maintenance, change the pulley, whatever you have to do, paint the pole. And when you're finished, you raise this pole back up, insert the threaded rod over here with the with the nuts, and it's a beautiful system. Now here is the actual flagpole, my sister's flagpole. You can see there's the threaded rod. Here's the reason I had to go up there. This nut, for some reason, fell off and the threads got buggered up somehow. They couldn't get the nut back on, so I had to go up and rechase the threads and insert the nut. But this is the uh, the system that they have, and you could see it's a, it's a large pole, and it does, like I said, they all need maintenance. This one needs to be stripped and painted, uh, and that's a, like a 60-foot pole, very hard to get up and around. Okay, this is the project I'm going to have to try and tackle uh, very soon, probably Monday. And uh, I have to make this. This was two end caps on uh, a fireplace mantle uh beautifully carved uh, again this house was made by a famous architect and and he really his attention to detail was amazing but now i have to duplicate this now <laughs> look at this first of all I, i've done carving and things like that before but look at the uh the, like even here this little spiral that comes down and it this is a difficult piece to carve with you know my skills i could do you would take time but to get it just right so what i'm going to try and do is make some kind of duplicator using a uh, handheld router, almost like a pantograph. See if I could get the basic shape and then finish it off. This is pretty tough, right? Not uh, not a big piece, thank goodness, but definitely a, a challenge. So that's for Monday. Okay, I'm back from dinner, and normally this is the time when I would go upstairs, review the footage, and edit out the whole half of this uh, video. But I don't have the time because I only have a few hours before I have to post this. It is actually Friday right now. I'm I'm late. But I have a great project that I've been putting off I want to do. Let's get okay, right to that. for today's project. I've been putting these off for a while because I've really been looking forward to it. These are a pair of Boca. Now, you're all familiar with the name Boca. Boca was a, uh, uh, a tool and saber and sword and razor manufacturer that started off in Germany. And uh, they were huge. In 1830, they were so big they had over 64 blacksmiths. 47 grinders working full-time, plus workers and trainees, and they were putting out 2,000 sabers a week. 
So it was a hop in place. And they've been in business since, one way or the other. So uh, they got a long history and they make all kinds of products. But this one here is just such a lovely size. I wanted to do this for a special reason because I'm going to give this away. This is going to be a giveaway at the Jacktown Spring Show. There's going to be a lot of things going on there. If you could make that show this spring, Jacktown, you will not be sorry. Everybody's going to walk away with something. So uh, we got a lot of other uh, people coming. I'll get more into that as we get closer. But let's do this up nicely. Look at this. Look at the beautiful lines on this thing. Let's get this. Uh, let's get the party started. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what these boker pliers look like before we started. And we're calling this project done. This came out just, just the way I was hoping it would. Wanted to do a nice a nice job on these pliers that not this is as close as you can get to a mirror finish without getting fingerprints. See here, we got a pretty good finish, but it doesn't show fingerprints, you see? So that's about as close as you can get. It's a brushed finish but polished out and uh we did the handles we did inside the handles the back everything is great just beautiful the jaws were in great shape of course because they don't touch and let me show you what happens uh test the sharpness here with a zip tie you could see it's shooting it across you know so it's a, it's very sharp uh, just a beautiful pair and somebody will be taking this home we'll scout craft the red in there somebody will be taking this home at Jacktown Spring Show so uh, hope to see you there and uh, this was a fun little project wasn't it okay so in closing that was a fun little project looking forward to uh, to raffling that off at uh, Jacktown and thanks so much for stopping by I hope you have a great weekend take care now bye bye <laughs>